You're going to start just uh, in a second. Yes, I wish you a warm welcome to the Goethe Institute tonight for this talk, discussion, presentation with Patricia Govea. Thank you that you're here. We're looking forward to your presentation about transmedia, playful aesthetics, arts-based research, playful media, gaming, participation, and civic engagement. And um, I have to stress that this conference is taking place in a bigger event, a five days cultural management academy, bringing together more than 15 young people working as artists, curators in different museums, and organized in cooperation with different institutions, the many European cultural institutes from Poland, from Portugal, thank you for this cooperation, from Germany and from the embassy in Sweden, our Austrian friends and many, many partners more, University of Bucharest. You find all the partners on the program of this academy. So thank you that you have come tonight to this uh, presentation of Patricia. Patricia, who just opened uh, and curated, uh, yeah, co-curated this uh, exhibition play mode. I think you will talk about this a little bit later, so I won't say many things about this. A beautiful and very interesting exhibition. And you are, Patricia, if I find my paper, you are pro professor at the University of Lisbon. Yeah. After having uh, teach in different places, also in Norway, so it's difficult to imagine bigger difference in Europe between Lisbon and Norway? No? no. <laughs> <laughs> more similarities. Okay, more similarities. We will hear about it. But I think the most, for me, as I have read your <laughs> curriculum vitae and uh, 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 the list of your publication, is the fact that you are working as curator, as scientific, as researcher on this interface between arts, design, university and science. And I think this will be certainly also one of the points you will be presenting us. I have the pleasure to announce that at the end of this conference, and naturally we will also have the time to discuss your thesis with the public, uh, there will be, a, how to say, there will be a glass of wine served uh, um, before in front of our building here, and you're naturally kindly invited to this. So, I will pass the floor to Patricia, and uh, yes, go on, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. I, I should thank uh, the Goethe Institute, Camões Institute from Portugal, but also Unique from Romania. And I'll uh, start by giving you a little bit of uh, information about my background, uh, where I started and what I've been doing for the last three to four years. And there were two main projects besides everything else. It was the curriculum reform of the Fine Arts Faculty at Lisbon University. We did it for the last three years. So last year it was our first year of uh, uh, school faculty reform where my department, Multimedia Art Department, exchanged everything, the bachelor, the master and the, the, the PhD, which is a doctoral studies program. And at the same time, I was working in that exhibition with um, an architect, Pedro Gadanik. He came to open this museum in Lisbon four years ago. He came from New York, MoMA. And we were working together with uh, Philippe Pais, which was a former doctoral student who defended his thesis in 2015. And I was his uh, supervisor. So that was uh, what I've been doing, even though I will go back a little bit after some time. One of our main challenges at, at our University of Lisbon was to make students connect with engineers and the literature department as well. So we have programs for different things. So, and I was in charge of making this connection with the engineering students department. And for the last three years, I opened this track with my engineers colleagues uh, called Lisbon Gaming, where we make, for during one semester, we make our students collaborate uh, during one semester in a project they create themselves with uh, our help. 
and uh, they come up with a game at the end of the semester, and we have a public presentation that you will see in these next scenarios. Our main goal is precisely to engage students and to make like um, uh, artists think about their soft skills, their communication skills, but also to make engineers uh, be able to communicate with artists. And it's not easy. And uh, they had to challenge a lot with our help to make this collaboration. And um, we, are, we want to, to think in two terms. They create one problem, they create a game, they create a concept, and then they have to solve it. They have to create a prototype. And at the end, we invite uh, companies in Lisbon to go and see their work. So for the last three years, um, and that's... Oh, I'm sorry. I think I jumped into... No, no, sorry, that's okay. Uh, what we want to do also, in, and you will see the, the gaming uh, program afterwards, we want to, uh, in our reform, we want to um, connect what it used to be in our faculty that uh, I, when I was there 30 years ago before I left, I, I was in different places, I was at that university that I am now, and I could collaborate with designers, I could collaborate with sculptures, with paintings, and for the last 15 years, we tend to uh, avoid these collaborations and make uh, the, our degrees more specialized. So we want to go against specialization because our students for our bachelor, they tend to think that they know how to create many things, but they don't know, they don't have the, the enough skills to uh, go and to create their projects in a, a connected way or in a, a teamwork way. So uh, what we want is re really to rest the, the, the history as, and for our reform, we tend to like go back with a new mindset and to make them uh, more aware of other departments at our faculty, but again, at the University of Lisbon as well. And that's some literature that, that I was brought just to contextualize how my own research for the last year. I was uh, doing uh, research for the math catalog, so I was, that's the codes that I found uh, interesting to bring today. So th there is some changes in the intercultural museum. We tend to work in terms of thematics, in to create a team, um, and then to uh, to uh, after the concept is created to continue our research. And that's how we worked in terms of the exhibition, but also for our curriculum reform. Uh, so I think there is a kind of activism that museums should go for and to avoid uh, some romantical ideas about art autonomy, like our faculty uh, were uh, really um, avoiding lots of hybrid uh, and multiple identities in our um, own contents. So that's... The, the, the research I was doing again uh, for a chapter as well that I wrote this year, besides the one that I have in this catalog, and you will find all these references afterwards. And now I can present the Lisbon Gaming, um, um, the Lisbon Gaming workshop that we have for three years now. And here you can see our students, that was our first year, and it went quite well. We had around uh, 15 students from the fine arts faculty and, and from the engineering faculty, there are around 60. So some games had one artist for four programmers. And that's uh, last year, and I'll present you a video from their um, public um, uh, presentation, which is always in May. So that was from 2018, and um, at the end of May, they, we go with them, we make their evaluation out there, we arrived in the morning, they prepare everything, all their materials, and then we start uh, the day with all people around. That's one of my colleagues from the engineering faculty, the R3, working with students in this project. That was with an Romanian Erasmus student. He will be there <laughs> in one minute. So there are also Erasmus, that's the <laughs> Romanian student, and both are, the other two are Portuguese, the three of them. So we have students from many different countries these days, from Erasmus. 
And uh, like in 2008, we had around 80 fine arts students, 18, sorry, 18 for, uh, fine arts students, again, 60 engineering engineers. And um, that's a funny project that they, it, it's a master's student from the uh, um, engineering faculty, and that's a replica for a uh, bell phone. And they did it uh, with an augmented reality game for a museum we had in our technical faculty. And they were, he was collaborating with fine artists um, again uh, for their projects, which now is in that museum. So last year we had around 18, this year we had 25 uh, students from our fine arts faculty. So as you can see, uh, students really uh, start to, uh, taking it seriously. So they really engaged in this uh, initiative and they are very happy this year. And then if you like, I can give you this uh, PDF and then you can go to their uh, blogs and all the materials, all the archive we have for these projects. We can see, you can see their prototypes and everything is um, connected in their blogs. Their process, working process uh, is in their blogs. They have to write a post each 15 days for us to be aware of what they have been doing. And then uh, this year, they, the day was even more excited, uh, exciting because they were really more. There were there more students, and they were really engaged in that initiative. So, I think you get a clue of what is going on. My research in playful interfaces goes back to my doctoral thesis. I was uh, researching, I started as a fine artist, and then I was uh, into digital arts and finally in digital gaming. And I did my thesis in digital gaming back to, uh, to 2008. And um, another thing we did uh, for the last three, in this case for the last two years, was uh, we tried to internationalize our faculty as much as we could, and we do this. Um, we had we received this proposal from Estienne Paris um, in two years ago, and they came uh, to Lisbon to give a workshop. And this year we went to Paris to give, uh, and the, the Portuguese teachers gave the workshop there. And we they brought to Lisbon 30 students, and we brought to Paris uh, this uh, year 10 Portuguese students and two teachers to teach playful interfaces in the case of Estienne Paris in, in Lisbon was such a project and it was about playful interfaces as well. So this is a rich uh, interface like this is the Lisbon um, workshop and this is in Paris and now we tend to exchange students work together to create playful interfaces. For this one, uh, for the one in Lisbon was mainly about Lisbon, and for the one in Paris it was uh, playful uh, gaming uh, short concepts. So during five days we work with students for, with their projects, and we discuss their projects, we go out with them, and things like that. And again, blogs. <laughs> we tend to uh, we uh, make students create their blogs with all these memoralia. And uh, f in Lisbon, were the Portuguese students who did it. In uh, Paris, were the French students who create their blogs. That's another um, program we had. I'll go there next week for the students' exhibition on 23 of. Um, uh, of uh, September, and that's another protocol we have, like Sound of Lisbon and uh, Mainz University came to Lisbon in May this year, and then we go with our students to Mainz next week. So we've been kind of active in terms of implementing these ideas. And um, another thing we had this year was an invitation to be on campus at Hars Electronica. Do you know what Hars Electronica <laughs> is? So the festival, we were really proud to present our students' work there. And um, again, that's part of their digital catalog. And there is one of my colleagues, Monica Menz, and one uh, doctoral student, Anna Vicente, who prepared all these um, uh, projects. If you can see, the Fortress is one of the games that we created during the gaming, Lisbon Gaming, in 2018. It was one student's project that uh, started there. So, 
Internationalization for our faculty was something that we really wanted our students to go ab abroad, to, to, to know, to make their network, to connect, to create projects with, in many different contents. For play mode again, as I told you before, we wanted to have a team and that uh, was we were like trying to discuss the digital revolution. If we go back to Ars Electronica this year, they were speaking about the middle crisis of the digital revolution. And uh, it's true, it's like we have been around for almost 40, 50 years, and we still speak about the digital revolution as something really new. That's why history is very important. So for play mode, we wanted to avoid any media specificity. We didn't want to have only interactive media. We didn't want, we wanted to have like paintings, sculptures, uh, performances, photography, video, all the media in this transmedia way that I will go afterwards, I'll speak about it. So we want to have a team. And that was to reflect about the digital revolution in Lisbon uh, with uh, international artists, but also with two new commissions and some Portuguese artists, of course, to dignify their work and in terms of a, a show which will reflect this digital revolution as the main team. And we find for uh, micro concepts, which was interaction, participation, gaming, and playful behaviors. So it was uh, our approach, our team. And then we started like three years ago uh, with our uh, curatorial assistant to develop the concept in terms of like going to museums to find the pieces that we wanted to bring to Lisbon and to negotiate with new commissions with the Portuguese artists and so on. This is some imagery from the, the exhibition last week, opened last week. And we wanted really to, like what we did at the fine art faculties, like we, we need to start to connect with the painting department, with the sculptural department, as we went in separate ways. We want to go integrate all these departments in a connected way again. The same, we wanted to integrate sculpture into interactive media. There's a room with gaming, but we didn't want to present it as just a new media exhibition and again, another new media exhibition. Here's, it's a collective of artists, the specialists, they are architects who create really weird environments. In this case, they went to the south of the country and they used arti uh, artisanal, um, uh, in this case, they created this clay uh, domino. So they were playing with these ludic ideas about the domino and how uh, they can evoke it. But also some objects, that's from play mode. That's me when the catalog arrived at the exhibition the day before our opening, I was so happy. So it was, we were still in the production setting. And to give you a contest, I was during the 90s, I was, I did exhibitions for myself, I collaborated in the European capital of our second city in Porto, I did uh, gallery shows, I worked in many different contents, I worked with uh, historians, I worked with architects, and um, I ended up like, after I did my PhD, I ended up as a schooler and I was very happy to do that because that's part of the text of the catalog because I find that I'm feeling much happy to exercise my freedom in an experimental way. But I changed many, many times my way of behaving. I was a painter. Here again, I was taking pictures around the Europe in my travels. And then I was uh, in, in our Young Creators show in Lisbon. Then the Digital River for me in 97 was the digital revolution. But the digital, the, the digital revolution was there. I was creating websites in an artistical context, also video and paintings with uh, some um, digital programs. I also did some CD-ROMs, what we now know that that's the CD-ROM heart and some CD-ROMs for these kinds of exhibitions. And then I also did some indie projects and some gallery projects, net art, and some projects with students. That was my first uh, project where I uh, was collaborating with another artist, but also with a bunch of students from a, an advanced um, creativity school in Lisbon. It's, it's online, you can go and see it. 
But for a living, I was doing graphic design, internet or uh, web design, and I was very happy in, uh, because I could live with this work in terms of I was doing it to make my living, to be uh, able to create my own artistical projects and to do whatever I would like to do. And at that period, during the 90s in Lisbon, these are, were some of my most fundamental concepts, subversion, modification, and play were fundamental. And, but we have to give it a context, because these days I tend to go to, uni to my university and sometimes to collaborate with students from Norway, from France, from, and they look all similar. Uh, and, but because we are in a globalized world, they all have the same anxieties, but one thing uh, I found, it's like they have no clue about history. They are mixing like modernities with postmodernities, and they make lots of populist statements. And that's everywhere, I think. There's no, there's an uh, historical perspective which is really worries me. So this is one of one artist that I was looking at some uh, lots of years ago, and this uh, in 2015 is uh, he, he has this idea of just imagine how it was because now we take it to the digital revolution for granted we don't even uh, can see because of the uh, social media we only tend to see the bad side of it we almost forget I was enthusiastic during the night it is about the, the the internet as a medium a new medium now it's a mass medium and we tend to forget about some of the things that he was say, telling you here, that we uh, changed a lot during the last 20 years, and uh, we should maybe also make a history of all these movements, of all these different uh, perspectives in terms of artistical behaviors and so on. But that was some of the artists that I was in Lisbon, very curious to see. Uh, using the internet with a very bad connection and uh, I was eager to go and to hear about them. They were jolly now, they for more than 25 years they are doing installations and they were those who survived. They were doing exhibi uh, one exhibition in Lisbon, I met them, I went in, they went for several exhibi exhibitions in Spain and so on. So these are the ones who survived, but there are many artists who didn't and I will go to it afterwards. That's another reference I had. And Laurie Anderson, these days people don't even know these projects and it seems like we are creating from scratch a, an old a field of new media. And we tend to be like this guy who was working with Laurie Anderson during the 90s. He's a media creator with a background in art design, engineering and digital entertainment and he, he works in several contexts. And what is this about creating? I told you before, art has a creation problem. You create a problem and then you solve the problem in a design mindset. Sometimes it's the same person, other times you will have both a designer and an artist. But the transmedia uh, started for me definitely with this project in 2007 with my students. I was invited to do a, uh, an exhibition for a Portuguese library and uh, I did the playing with poetry which was a platform where uh, my students create videos, create audio files and they uh, record uh, uh, Portuguese um, poets. And, um, and they did installations and so on. We did gaming with flash games and then we asked people to uh, send us pictures and then we give them a prize. We gave them a prize and uh, we also asked for a poem. And uh, it, it was great for our students. It was from two different faculties, a private and a public one. And they were created, that's a fine arts student. And uh, the audio is from a sound uh, student. And uh, again, I turned it, my project into a collaboration, into a transmedia project, because I was hearing about some marketing projects from Nine Inch Nails in the United States. They did, uh, there's this company called 42 Entertainment, and I was aware of their work. And um, they also did some um, 
projects for Batman, from Chris Christopher Nolan 2008 Batman. And uh, I was aware of this, so I was thinking, hmm, maybe I should apply this for in a, an indie contest in, in my own field of research. So the project appeared, uh, that's the library, you have eight installations, eight flash games at the time, and the library facility, and then they went to the web. And the projects were well received around. I went to a conference in Hong Kong, I met some other people from other countries working in transmedia, and I was finding the, the ones who I would like to travel with. So that was um, really a, a good period to uh, find it. Some of what I'm telling you is on my web page, this one, Academia. But again, going to blogging. I think that's another important uh, issue, because when I was doing some research uh, back in 2006, I, uh, with my blog, I was able to connect with people from different countries and to connect with people in my own country. So blogging, I always advise my students to keep in touch of a blog, to make themselves appear, then to connect with other people around, and that's really important for network. And with this in mind, always, I was uh, researching other people. Uh, this one, uh, Ian Bogost, it's a recent book, but I'm following him for a long time now, from the United States or from the University of Copenhagen, Miguel Sicard. But I could bring you many different examples how, uh, from researchers around the world who are speaking about how play matters and how this is important. It's not nothing new, it's just uh, the use of various media for the creation of new forms of performance and interactive art that mixes audiences across the internet. And uh, we have to think about, we can use it in terms of a uh, commercial way or in a, an independent or more exploratory way. And uh, there are some collectives of artists, in this case in UK, they are using uh, as an artistical source, really connected with theatre and I was uh, researching them as well. They went to Lisbon, so I was very glad to see their talk. They did this, um, it was in 2003, an Arts Electronica Prize, Uncle Royal Round, one, uh, All Around You. It was for the Institute of Contemporary Arts in London, and it's a game where you have to find Uncle Roy, you have uh, 90 minutes to find Uncle Roy. And that's a performatic project, and uh, you have this story world where you have to connect with someone online and you have to commit for someone else that an uh, online player commits for someone on the, the, on the st London streets for 12 months. So it's always is using the, the, the city as a map, as a source of, um, of territory. Also, using virtual reality can be a, a plus to create a kind of agenda in your game design to tell something. If you want to tell uh, the others or to create empathy or to speak about the subject matter, you can use it in, in the gaming design. And uh, that's a project from a collective. Who they wanted to uh, raise conscience about uh, violence against black people in the United States. So the game is like you are into the skin of this guy and you have to uh, create a kind of uh, empathy because you can feel the same uh, emotions that uh, a black person in the United States uh, feel when they go to the grocery shop or something like that. So that was uh, also a possibility that I found in my research to use the, the impact of uh, virtual reality in short documentaries. And I brought you two examples from the same collective. They have a different name now within, uh, they were sold after. But that was uh, two projects they did um, in 2015. And it was in one you, you dress the you you are in the skin of a nebula. Um, sorry, uh, a woman seeks healing through faith. This is the story of Tekon as she is a survivor of a nebula. And uh, the other one is about how to uh, feel how to be a refugee. 
I mean, quick, but uh, again, if you, you have in my texts, in my articles, you have lots of this information, so I'm just giving you an overview of the possibilities. And that's from this summer. That's, I don't know if you, you saw it before, <laughs> so this summer, that's the project that using the same kind of playful methodology, playful behavior to make people contact in both sides, in Ciudad de Juarez, in Mex Mexico and uh, New Mexico. And it came fr from an architect. And um, what I was, uh, in terms of transmedia, I was also using Darren, McDonnell, uh, Darren O'Donnell, which is um, a Canadian researcher, and he has his, this collective, Mammal Mammalian Diving Reflex, where they create amazing projects to make people connect in a very activist way. So to create an idea of to develop a stat uh, static that uh, work with uh, relational situations and uh, engage people in a civic sphere. Remember at the beginning of my talk, I was also, besides gaming, speaking about civic engagement. So they asked teenagers to go with them to restaurants because they cannot afford to go to restaurants, so they invited them. Also, they asked uh, children to cut seniors' haircuts. We were, speak we were speaking this morning about uh, the idea of uh, intergenerational uh, um, connections. So gaming is uh, since the Wii uh, console from Nintendo, and uh, the, these projects tend to mix, thank you so much, to mix uh, different generations in a playful moment or in a, a kind of happening or performance, whatever you still want to call it. So I was using Dara O'Donnell as well, and this book, uh, Social Acupuncture, for, uh, from 2008, but also some of his um, recently published articles. This is from a um, French researcher that I like a lot, which is Catherine Malabou's The Way We Adapt. But we have also to take uh, into account different fields in a different way that we tend to do it in the 90s. We tend to go to system theory, to think that we have to do lots of things. We need to learn prog programming. We need to learn different uh, things from biology. These days, we tend to think that maybe we can integrate in a team all these, I these fields, and we can start creating a project from scratch, hearing all these people, because they can come up with creative ideas, and then we all together create a project, which is a kind of different approach. It's an integrative approach. Uh, bon, cute cat theory. That's another video that you can go afterwards and see it. But it's like we tend to avoid peop uh, the the uh, people who like exchange cat memes uh, in the internet. But you can use it as an uh, in an activist perspective as well. And I was always I when I was in 2013 in Colombia, I discovered these guys, Antanas Mocos and uh, Penalosa, Enrique Penalosa, which this was the Bogota mayors. Previously, was a, a rector for the University of Bogota, and because I, I lived for a while in Brazil and uh, also in Colombia and Mexico, and uh, I was really amazed by this story, and you can go and see the Danish director video about these two guys. I, g I brought some images, but really, the video, it's a piece, and you can find it uh, uh, on YouTube, and uh, it's an amazing story how they really changed Bogota behavior, citizens' behaviors in a really amazing way. So they did some TV um, short films to uh, explain to people how they could save water, how they, the, ta the taxes could be more sustainable in terms of velocity. So they really changed the, the some behaviors using theater in a kind of pedagogy and uh, changing uh, infrastructures. Because also Enrique Peñalosa is an, an engineer and the other one, comes from the theater, so both together, because Enrique Peñalosa was very, um, people trusted him, and uh, the other, it was so uh, performatic, so charismatic, I would say, and both they could, they did uh, this revolution in Colombia. <coughs> That's another, they invited some, uh, 
circles, perfor they did performance, street performances, and they did an amazing job. Another artist that Darren O'Donnell, um, that I was previously quoting, thinks uh, she's uh, making a difference is the Czech uh, artist Katarina Seda's work. Go and have a look. She created uh, people from her village, wanted her to become the, the mayor of her villages. And she has some works where she put people in collaboration with each other. And uh, she is what I'm trying to tell you about what we can do in, in this arts based research, revol revolutionizing social circumstances. And m for what I'm this year was researching, using uh, um, artists, researchers, designers, uh, is like we really need to go to uh, avoid differentiations between new media and contemporary arts, for instance, because like in my time, I was very glad to, I was saying I don't want to go into museums or galleries anymore, I want to go to, to a university, but these post-internet artists these days, they tend to be much more well connected with the, mar with the market, uh, and there's a market these days, and they tend to be like, they can produce their own paintings, but also their digital pieces in a more integrated way. So one, my statement is we should merge contemporary arts and that's what we try to do in our play mode exhibition. Contemporary arts, like this American artist, is, goes around the world and he created these pieces. He can, they can be performances, he has a bunch of uh, interesting photographs or videos in a playful way. So we should mix different styles, past, and because uh, when I tell you that we are in a popular modernist fashion, uh, merging modernism with postmodernism, which are the two coins of the same, uh, the two sides, sides of the same coin, I'm telling you that we are in a digital, digital plenitude yet, and that we should go beyond the disease of postmodernism, special, modern specialization, postmodernism, relativism, and how uh, younger people tend to mix both in a really uh, shaker. It's like doing a shaker with both trends, like the new, the new is a modernist concept, it's not a postmodern concept, and the digital revolution is from postmodernism, it's not from the modernism. But, uh, Again, we tend to uh, mix all these uh, things in a shaker and Marshall McLuhan with rock and roll and uh, all these things uh, came from the 20th century and what Bolter is saying that we live in a popular modernism fashion these days, mixing micro narratives of the self with several media. Uh, and with all this, uh, we tend to avoid these distinction, distinctions that we had before uh, between all the new media, even though if these separations are useful, are still useful, we tend to be in a connected context these days. And, uh, but again, things changed and we have to think how uh, it changed for the last uh, 20 to 30 years. So there are researcher labs and artists have different places where they can uh, present their work and uh, there are more collaborations and there are diff a different environment and uh, things are not like versus science versus arts anymore. So in this integrated world, uh, we should uh, avoid all the distinctions that we were doing previously in the uh, kind of media, zombie media contests. So uh, that's one of the authors that we invited for our catalog. She wrote a, a short piece about uh, playing and uh, her book, I really recommend her book because she is something that she's telling you that it's nothing new. What we are doing in transmedia or playful media aesthetics is nothing new. Uh, again, we go to modern aesthetics and we find many precursors like Marcel Duchamp, Dadaism, even Yakometi, when there is no play, you are dead. So play is such an instinct. Uh, we can, I cannot play with my cat, but I, I can play with my cat, but I cannot tell him a story. So there's this uh, instinct, uh, really precious uh, thing about playing that uh, we might 
uh, use again and again. So these are the movements that we're using some of the transmedia ideas that we find uh, in these contents. That's a funny project that I wrote uh, from uh, the Media Lab facade in Madrid, where it's, I will play it very shortly because my time is over. <laughs> you are playing Tetris in two different ways. One is uh, doing the rotation and the other one is doing the um, direction. And that was a project that they did to make people collaborate in, public, in a public space, which is Plaza de las Letras in the group. So just a short bit where you can see all the interfaces. Okay. So one is responsible for the direction. These two projects from Sweden, it's, they are mainly, mar uh, they open a call for creative projects and they uh, did these um, do-it-yourself ideas and people create had come up with some funny ideas using play again in a sustainable way. merging of contents as well like you sometimes are creating commercial projects other times to make a living as I told you at the beginning <laughs> to earn money to be able to do other projects and I think that's an advice I should I like to give to my students to be able to create in different contents There is another one, it's just a funny one, but it's quick and just you can go to their website and see more projects they have inserted there, so I broke it to me. Sorry, it was too quick, but it's just another information I can give you. The merging uh, uh, contents, artisanal contests with other con more technological based ones. It seems uh, also uh, something that you might like to take into account. So artists are no longer their back turned. There's another, an Australian artist that I find really interesting. He was uh, creating in many different contents. And uh, art autonomy is just like something that we don't have to take into account anymore. Some of, some of our children's games, that's something that I was been uh, telling you about. Uh, what you can use in remixing languages, media platforms and systems of play and game reign in a parody of cap the capitalist system. That's Franz Alice. Alice, we didn't have him in Lisbon, unfortunately, but now he has a, um, a show in Montreal uh, Contemporary Art Museum. Priscilla Fernandes, we have her in Lisbon. And so you can use marketing tools like Brad O'Donnell is doing some guerrilla marketing uh, pieces in, in, uh, in his work. 
and uh, retro engineering technologies to mix uh, various aesthetics and uh, to come up with a response to the emergency of the computer and digital media. Because what we see and we know it's like digital artists no are not represented in many museums these days still. So that's something that we should take care for future and the digital, revol uh, the digital revolution has to take into account that the internet become a mass media and artists and poets start using as their source of creation, production and dissemination. That's in another bunch of artists. Various forms of social media are suited for both individual identity construction, telling your own story and political or social engagement, telling a collective story. That's another artist. Politics of surveillance. And uh, we know these days that people tend to put lots of information online about themselves. So we had this concept of surveillance, uh, 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 surveillance of ourselves. And that's the another Czech artist might like to research an interface, a social interface. I'm now really quick, but I think you get the message. These are just some artists that I brought you to bring my into my conclusions. An arts-based research approach can be instrumental to many areas. Museology, our education has in itself much a capacity to create and identify problems, artistical skills with the, des with the design approach, design skills to solve them. An artistical approach should question the time we are living and generate critical debates following this exploratory methodology with the capacity to design possible solutions to identified problem, uh, problems. I, was, I, I will end up with uh, transmedia environments where artists use several media to convey their ideas and co concepts about the world we are living. And we, take, we should consider postmodernism digital revolution with these procedural aesthetics, simulation aesthetics, and uh, the appreciation of tradition united with new age tendencies and technologies and this merged contemporary art space where the internet is now a mass media and unlike the real world has no borders. So if we want to be in an amputation mode or in a smart mo mode like in Minecraft and that's really the empty disruptive void open to be tested by gamers, hackers and artists, an arts-based research platform with no predetermined ideas or concepts, the idea of a sandbox where you can create whatever you like, where players can engage in a fictional world um, and to generate social and cultural awareness with a double blind view with no weight. And that's my references. And thank you very much, Multumersk, and I'm sorry for my delay. <laughs> 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 thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you very thank you very much. This was uh, what the French called a tour de force. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you presented many, many different aspects and it was not easy to follow everything on the um, mm -hmm. on the PowerPoint presentation, but you said you will also I'll give you the PDF to uh, and uh, to see it afterwards. I always prepare it to <laughs> exchange it yeah. afterwards. Then you can go and do further research. That's all we work these days. So I'm this very happy if you are interested in seeing it. Yeah, this would be great, I think. Mm -hmm. So in a minute, I give you the floor for questions, please, in English, if possible. Otherwise, we will try <laughs> to translate. Just a minute, please. Mm -hmm. I just will uh, <laughs> Ask the first question, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I'll c come to you in, in a short minute. Just I'm not at all an expert of this question. What, how are your relationship and the relationship of your projects with the economic world, so to say? Because y you talked about society, diff very different aspects, but not about economics. Uh, because I was working in several contents, the, ma the majority of them. Uh, during the 90s were commercial projects where we had, That's what I said. yes, so I was really budget like for this exhibition, uh, they work as a, pri uh, a public company, but they are a private energy company. So um, I had a budget 
me and my uh, colleague for the all the, the exhibition, for the catalog, for the invitation. We decided to give each artist a fee and then new commissions for Portuguese artists were ahead of the, the, the others' fee, of course, because it's there they were producing new work. But uh, like I was uh, showing you the, the CD-ROMs I did 20 years <laughs> or more ago, I was working uh, with a French company who was going to Lisbon to work with us to create these products. So I tend to be also connected with companies. That's why I'm, do the, I'm doing this partnership with the university, the technical university, where we uh, ask companies to go and to see uh, students' work. So we tend to speak with them in terms of which kind of profile do you need to achieve in future, we need to work out in future. It's very new. It's, not, it's, it's difficult to, to do these things and um, to even to persuade students that uh, it's uh, great for them to speak with others, other, uh, other um, actors. Uh, sometimes it's not because they tend to think that they know what the market needs. It's like typical 3D um, <laughs> um, specializations, programming. They are very worried about uh, programming issues and they tend to forget about communication issues. And companies were telling us that, that they, they don't know how to prepare their CV, they don't know how to go into the marketplace and to present themselves. So, so sometimes students also will work for these companies? Do you yes, think? but they are all paid or they go and find their jobs by themselves. But when we yes. connected for the museum, I had research budget, so I paid my students to work in the... In the or uh, sometimes they are like, uh, they have their credits, they are in our evaluation process. If they don't have credits for their work, they should get paid with research budgets. Okay, and so would you consider yourself as a socially and poli politically engaged person? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Even though in, in a not direct, like uh, I'm not a politician, yeah. or but I, I have a, a political agenda. I think w everything is political. <laughs> I have this, um, I really believe that, yes. Great, so some question, please. Thank you. So first of all, I'd like to congratulate you for the presentation. It was really fascinating and I can't wait for the PDF because I'm <laughs> sure there are so many interesting <laughs> aspects to discover. Uh, you mentioned civic engagement as one of the aspects of your work. And I was curious if you could describe how do you assess the impact of those projects that target civic engagement? Uh, the ones that I bring my t uh, my students with me to work in like this library contents it was uh, i was uh, invited as an artist and i decided to do it with my students and uh, i have i really have this agenda of doing projects like the one in paris it took me a lot of much more contact hours than the ones <laughs> that i need to put into my um week so we were there for five days we, we brought students and we were in into French museums and so on. So I tend to uh, make them aware of the, 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 the global world we are living and uh, engaging them in this uh, connected space. So in terms of my, my responsibility as a schooler uh, is to have updated research. That's another thing that I'm trying to do each year, even though I spend more hours preparing courses and so on, and also writing. So for this museum, first of all, what I wanted to tell museums is the Portuguese scene is not aware of the digital revolution these days in the, th the second decade of, of the 21st century. So in, if you go and read the, 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 the text I wrote, it was precisely to create awareness of the changes and that sometimes we tend to have ideas about what people um, think uh, in terms of like the youngers, and uh, they are really eager to uh, to, to find things uh, like with their teachers and th those projects that I showed from Darren, Darren O'Donnell that you go out with teenagers. W one thing we d we also uh, do in our faculties like um, 
Doctoral students are master students mentors, and master students mentors are bachelor students. Uh, uh, master students are uh, bachelor students mentors, and uh, we tend to have like together meetings together and to have all this uh, uh, structure going on. <laughs> I don't know if I really answer, but that's my short contribute for. The, the future. Also with Erasmus, I was very happy this year because in our gaming 2019, I had an Italian student and she was saying, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity at the end of the day when she told me that, that I was like, <laughs> really like almost crying because it's, it's something that, it, it was an opportunity, f they, f they felt it, they, it's just, uh, again, like, uh, between girls and uh, students, uh, and uh, the technical school is very masculine. And the, at the fine art faculty, we tend also to raise these issues of sexism, and sometimes they, uh, my students, my girl students go there and they find like they had lots of prejudice when they create technologies or they create games. So all these awarenesses, <laughs> I try to... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, other questions? Hi, thank you very much for the very practical presentation. It was quite refreshing. Um, you speak about, you speak a lot about collaboration in your presentation. And my question was, how did you get to the, all the departments, so such different departments, engineering, literature, and arts, to work together? Because it's a very tough mission that you had, and I think it brings a lot of value, especially for art students who not only have to have a concept, but they also need to implement it technically. So how did you get them to work together? Thank you. Thank you <laughs> for your question. That's an interesting question, and it's not easy at all. It was at the beginning, again, I, I was back at this university where I was a student uh, with an application process which was kind of difficult because I was not the one that they would like to have. Me and another colleague, I'm <laughs> very glad to say that, <laughs> because I was not alone. So I was there f three and a half years, and we, were, we needed to do the reforms. That's why I was there, because they really needed me, or in my colleague, the one who get in at, at the same time. But people, it's, uh, I, I was, uh, I had a different background. I was uh, in other places, I was uh, in other faculties, so people were really suspicious, and they tend to tell our students about that. But the first year I get in, I had a really interesting collaboration from the engineering faculty because they knew the story. So they were like my part partners in crime. So we will tend to create this e amazing experience for our uh, fine art, art, art uh, students. And my students were like really, when they get into the engineering faculty, I don't know why, they think they go into a really weird environment. But because I, as a student, and uh, as a student in that faculty, I had many friends in, uh, in the engineering department, I'm telling them, you will gain with this collaboration. I get many works, uh, because engineers are a lot, and they tend to have a job when they finish their course. So that's what happened to me. I ended up doing lots of communication designer with engineers, because I went to the engineering department at Lisbon University 30 years ago because they had a pirate radio, they had lots of great parties, and so uh, the, the photography department was there, so it was something that I did in my own time. So I was telling them about my ex own experience and how I gained with these collaborations. That's why I think that we had lose in that faculty the, 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 um, this um, amazing atmosphere of being able to go other places. And like they at, sometimes they tell you that's about uh, eight uh, stations uh, to go, or they have a bus to uh, the, the other faculty, and they say, oh, it's so far away. It's like eight uh, tube stations, eight or uh, 15 minutes uh, bus trip 
uh, do you think it's is it far away it's ridiculous it's just nearby so <laughs> we also have students from the science faculty uh, doing a minor because in our reform we uh, exchange how we credit students we tend to have more informal ways of credit them so they can go to other faculties to have some credits there did i answer it <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and it was very, I noted down a few things, but it was like a whole world <laughs> of references. Um, my question is because the, uh, the challenge, is, I find it very challenging to bring people from various backgrounds to work together on the same thing. Uh, what are the most common, let's say, language barriers that you had language not in terms of uh, english spanish or whatever but in terms of translating the content of one discipline to another and i have a second one also <laughs> <laughs> go ahead yeah uh, the second one is uh, you mentioned museums uh, and also the uh, there are two things that um, there are also something that interests me and one of them is the history, then the fact that we are creating content all the time as a society, that we kind of tend to lose uh, the importance or let's say the relevance uh, or the habit of uh, having a history other than clearing cookies. <laughs> and uh, how the museum space or a space that is designated to a certain kind of contact with art, has changed or would need to, if it needs to change, uh, let's say a sort of meaning. Because museums originally were designed as spaces for scientists or for people to work specifically in those spaces and then it became open to public and to uh, to, the, to join and then it become, become kind of commercial and now, uh, yeah, <laughs> these are, <laughs> thank you. Okay, for the first one, I think that I always have amazing talks with my students when they um, arrived at the end of the semester and they had to present their work and they tend to be super stressful. And uh, they say, oh, but they are not. And because uh, I'm telling them, please write your blog for me to be aware ahead of time of your problems and for me to get in touch with your problems. And I can ask for the, the project with the Rumi Romanian student, and it was from a girl from the fine arts faculty. I asked them, but we decide this with my colleagues, of course. I will ask the group to come into the fine arts faculty for a meeting with me to ask them, because they had a really great pro a pr project, a game about the, our discoveries, and it was a really amazing project. I put something else on them, some more responsibility, so I asked them to come to my faculty to have a, a chat with me. And they came, and they improved the, the interface of their project. So uh, because they were like communication issues were all the time happening and they tend to, oh, they, I don't like their colors, but they think that I, I cannot change them because of their, I have to, to, to change progra the programming. Uh, and so, and I was working in, the, in multimedia content, so I know if people want to change the colors, they will do it. If you persuade <laughs> them in the right uh, way, they will. So it's like mediate, mediating the, these discussions, like tend to let them go, let them connect, asking them, are you meeting on Skype, or did you go to the other campus, or did you invite your, the other students from the engineering faculty to come to the fine arts faculty? So we are like in mentoring, but in a kind of, with deadlines. And uh, I, I, I know uh, ahead of the, the public presentation, if they had problems or not, or if they, I tend to, to follow. Uh, things and that makes things easier because that was what the, the before the engineering faculty were trying to do these projects with other faculties from the arts fields in Lisbon and it never it failed but because we we are me and my colleagues uh, were really into a teamwork trying to help students and we contact each other by email during the week we send emails and things tend to these issues tend to go <laughs> in an easy, easier way, I think. That's 
For the second question, I was uh, when I was play, um, working in play mode with uh, Pedro Gadanho, uh, the architect I was telling you in the beginning, he was coming from MoMA and he was like teaching me lots of things about new museum practices. And one of them was precisely to change museums' behaviors. He had the chance of opening this, uh, now he's uh, again in the United States, but for the last four years he was at MAP with a totally different uh, program uh, for the museum that we didn't have such a, an environment in Lisbon before. It was the architecture, which is very innovative, that's the, the for the last four years, and the director who came from uh, New York to open and to make the, the, he did 81 exhibitions during four years, which is a lot, in two facilities, two museum facilities. So uh, what he was advising was for the museum as a, an activist place where uh, there is, but yesterday I was in uh, your contemporary art museum and I saw the research center, visual culture research center, and I was, okay, that's the, the way w we should go. And the, the, the seeing history exhibition, I was happy to see like in, uh, in, the, in the wall that um, the curator was criticizing previous uh, curators of laziness. That's almost what I do also in the catalog for math. <laughs> it's like saying, there was lots of laziness. People from the art history don't get into engineering departments. They don't care how to emulate these simulations that we were doi doing in the, in the 90s. They don't care at all what we, what we were producing at that time to keep that knowledge. So there's this laziness in our cultural sec sectors that should wake up for the for all these transformations for all these because these days we tend to be i mean bucharest eating i don't know brazilian food uh, listening to some uh, seeing manga from asia listening for uh, we are uh, in a globalized world or it's uh, we have to uh, work differently i don't know <laughs> i don't have a formula i just think that that's my body of uh, references, I would say. <laughs> Don't know if... Uh, did I answer? <laughs> yes, <laughs> properly. Uh, yes, I was in Lisbon all last month for research. Um, I, was <laughs> I, was I was surprised to discover that um, depression rates are high in Portugal, especially among women. And also Portugal ranks low uh, in terms of like happy countries. Um, yep. Also, from my research, I saw that the culture is attached to sadness, as seen in the fado music, and also this uh, saudade culture. Uh, what can we as artists do to uh, uplift, um, I guess, cultures that could be considered more sad, uh, and uplift them into more happier states? Obrigado. <laughs> Thank you for your question. I think. Uh, you touch a point that I really, um, I cannot bring any, uh, everything, but there is uh, this um, body of research from Germany, from S Sebastian de Turning, and it was like uh, speaking about designing for the good life, which is, I find, very important. Arar is another um, scholar who's speaking about how we can, uh, these days, one of the main fields of research is about happiness. But um, I was living in Brazil, and Brazilians are always happy, and they always tell you they are they are happy. Portuguese will, will always tell you that they are really unhappy. They are they are they they tend to have all the world in their bags. <laughs> so I think that's really cultural. It's um, something that we should uh, research in future, but we should also avoid bias. The um, facts or uh, something that I didn't bring to our discussion. Um, that this morning you were talking about how we can uh, avoid populism. I would say to go into facts, checking, to, to check all the facts, and uh, doing research is the, on the only way to avoid populism, because we are never sure. And if, if someone can tell you if we are going into a crisis or not, or we never know. It's like no one knows. So these days, and we were living into a crisis for the last 10 years in Portugal, and I must tell you, I went, my, my life would be different if we didn't have this crisis. I wasn't in, in Norway, I wasn't, so 
it's like looking for happiness without fear, because I think we are in this new trend of everything is new, gadgets, gadgets, cult um, in this culture where uh, we create crises to make people fear, to make them... <laughs> May I ask you one question? <laughs> yes. I don't know which, <laughs> whether it's provocative, but just to know, in this kind of setting, is there still a place for an ancient image of the artist as a kind of genius individual who is yeah. developing without <laughs> others artistic... <laughs> <laughs> works, you know what I mean? So yes. it's, it's, it's also a changement of a paradigm, a complete changement of a paradigm. Or did you have such students who had such a strong personality, artistic personality, that they wanted to develop things also in an individual way? Yes, and all the faculties about authorial work. And that was one of our problems. I was reading this um, afternoon, uh, there's a Mexican uh, artist who is now in Portugal and he's saying that um, teaching students, arts, art students, has Leonardo da Vinci's, it's the cancer of the art faculties because we are teaching them. And I used to tell my students, there are, the Leonardo da Vinci's are not the, the the majority of you, so you maybe one in <laughs> each fifteen years. So we are doing it wrong because we pre we need to prepare the average student, not the special one. You will always find a, a way to do into the art market or whatever, or to maybe uh, not into the art market, but they will go. So we need to focus instead of the average students who need to earn a living, and we are human beings, and we uh, want to have to design for the good living. So I think that's the, the main goal. And to forget, they will still exist, they will, but we need to forget the, as a paradigm of the art student uh, profile, as someone who says, lots of gifts and <laughs> don't need any teaching because uh, he knows how to go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Think. <laughs> how to, maybe my last question from, hmm? from Marcel, because we can also continue in an informal way by yes, taking a yeah. drink and yeah. discussion. And, um, how do you see, because you're, t you're talking about happiness on one side and then about raising a critical view on the world. How this matches? You know what I mean? So we shouldn't be too happy, neither. <laughs> huh? uh, <laughs> maybe not too critical too, but <laughs> how, how do you deal with this? No, I think we should be very critical. Yeah. And to be very critical, make her suspicious in a fun way, because we all... I was thinking this uh, morning, um, in terms of like, uh, I have a quote from um, the Colombian mayor, um, cynicism, um, civism against cynicism. And I think it's like to... These days, young people tend to be really... Um, what Bolter uh, says that they this uh, cynical, uh, they don't believe in huge narratives, in uh, ideologies and anything. So they have this cynicism, which is, but in, in a way you can use it in a really playful way where you can mix, merge both, I would say. But always with a critical sense, we always with a... Um, really a mindset where you, mm, I got my suspicions, but I can go and see what's going on. <laughs> Just <laughs> in a less uh, narrative and uh, yeah. it's a more remix way, you know, it's just something uh, more informal, I would say. Yeah. So we should all encourage you in this way. Thank you very much Thank for you. this fascinating talk. I think uh, the participants of the Cultural Academy are a little bit tired. It has been a yes. long day, yes. so enjoy the evening, <laughs> enjoy the drinks, and the next day. To all the other people who came this evening, thank you for the attention, and we hope to see you soon again at the Goethe Institute.